Cassette Beasts initially caught my eye with the promise of interesting turn-based combat and a killer soundtrack, and it's available to play right now with Game Pass. We're taking a look on Xbox Series S. We cover a new game every single week, so if you like what we do, consider subscribing, and if there's a Game Pass game you'd like us to cover, comment below and let us know. And with that, we're rewinding with a pencil and letting you know if Cassette Beasts is worth your time. Over the past few years, I've really come around on turn-based combat. What used to be the bane of my existence has now become the combat system of some of my favourite games of all time. With that in mind, you'd think Cassette Beasts would be a slam dunk. Unfortunately, the reality is different. There are some absolutely fantastic ideas and depth within the combat system here, and if you're going to play this game for any reason, this is it. But the gameplay as a whole was missing that X factor for me. But before we get into that, I do want to sing the praises of the combat system, because whilst it didn't grip me, it is very unique and definitely worth experiencing. The premise here is simple, catch monsters, turn into them, and do battle, but the whole elemental system of attacks has been flipped on its head. Elemental attacks here cause dynamic changes to enemies, rather than being a more standard weakness like in Pokemon. Plastic monsters melt into poison types when you set them on fire, metal monsters bite back with every bit of damage dealt, and ice types can be melted into water for some examples. Like I said, this adds a very unique depth to the combat. Once you learn the effects of attack types, you can really shake up battles, but using the wrong attacks can actually buff your opponents. It's a great system, and it works well. There's also the added bonus of no random encounters. You can always see the monsters roaming around the world, and the biggest surprises you'll have are folks coming up to you to do battle, but you can always see them beforehand. There's also the partner system. In battle, you have a buddy, and if you guys work together, you can fuse together. This makes you super powerful and can help you discover new monsters to add to your cassette deck. The more you battle with your chosen partner, the more your relationship progresses, and the better you fight together. Some captured monsters even give you bonus abilities to explore the world, like a glider to cross large gaps. There was a lot of care to have this core combat system and have it branch out into the rest of the game. This is a very tightly designed game in terms of combat, but I think a lot of extraneous factors unfortunately brought down the entire gameplay experience for me. First and foremost is the movement in exploration. It just doesn't feel fun to walk around, and you'll be doing that a lot. Movement feels very stiff and very slow. You can dash, but only for a couple of seconds before coming to a complete stop. The world map isn't very big, and I feel like this choice was to make the world feel bigger, but it had a massive part of the game not feel great. The second issue I had was the repetitiveness of the fights. It never felt like I had to think too critically to overcome them. Sure, the element effects are cool, but they never felt like a lot of incentive to use them like there is in Persona, where hitting an enemy weakness rewards one more turn, and allows you to progress through fights without taking any damage. If I had an objective that was far away, I actively found myself avoiding fights so that I could save my health. There's an art direction issue I have regarding this issue too, which we'll get into on the next section. Before wrapping up, I'd like to touch on the character creator though. This is a really fun little addition and allowed me to make the legendary John Cassette, Mr. Main Character himself, armed with nothing but a sweatband and a poncho. Cassette Beasts was just missing that gameplay X factor for me. Don't get me wrong, it has some great ideas, but the whole package ended up feeling just very average. I wasn't excited to play, nor experiment with the elemental systems. I was just sort of going through the motions, and that's landing the gameplay an average 3 out of 5. In one word, the visual art direction here is inconsistent. We're combining pixel art sprites with hand-drawn character portraits with voxel environments, and overall, the game lacked a solid visual identity. It's this lack of cohesion that I think hurts the visual art direction the most. The voxel environments look fine, even great in some places, and the character models are drawn well, but do feel a little lifeless. The pixel art is really nicely animated, especially with attack animations, but it doesn't gel with the rest of the world. UI design is mostly function over form. It's not doing anything crazy, but it does have a little bit of flair, with one exception, I love the cassette player battle menu, it's a great blending of thematic yet practical UI design. 
The OST was something I was super excited for with this game, and unfortunately it fell a bit flat for me. As is standard, I'm listening to it whilst writing the script, and it's fading into the background beside me typing. I will give special mention to the Gramophone Cafe theme. This was the easy standout song for me, but the rest of the soundtrack felt very average. My only disliked track was the battle theme. It did do something interesting when I fused, and morphed into a vocal track, which was a cool detail, but the bass battle theme got on my last nerve within the first hour of playing. Very few games can get away with having very few battle themes. I can think of only two examples, and they have some of the best music ever put to a video game. Cassette Beasts unfortunately doesn't have that, and it only further hurts the repetitiveness of gameplay. I want to emphasise that the OST isn't bad, it was just mediocre in my opinion. I feel like I came off a bit too critical there. Before we wrap up, I want to touch on a few extra art direction details that I quite enjoyed. I love that the healing items are pencils to rewind your tapes, and that the quest names are famous songs, and that additional powers are cassette stickers. There's a lot of fun extra details buried in here, and it shows that the devs cared, which is always nice. Overall though, the art direction here wasn't doing much for me. Everything felt a bit cheap visually, and the soundtrack stayed a bit too comfy, and even got annoying in some cases. There are some nice minute details, but everything combined together is crossing the threshold into a high 2 out of 5, very just below average. The narrative here falls into similar pitfalls as gameplay, it just didn't grip me. The story here is that you've awoken on a mysterious island, and now you have to find a way back home. It's a decent premise, but it never really goes further than just existing to service the gameplay. There are some fun characters along the way, like the evil estate agent vampires, but outside of the odd exhale of a funny line, I was never actually invested in getting home, or the island, nor its inhabitants. The hook was swung, but ultimately missed because the game drops you in just a little too quick, and doesn't really give you time to settle into the world. Admittedly, narrative isn't usually the deciding factor for how good these kind of games are. It is leagues ahead of Pokemon, but in the same respect, we're incredibly far from the heights of the Persona stories. We still do have to give it a score though, because we review the whole product, and ultimately, Cassette Beasts is getting a 2 out of 5 for narrative. Cassette Beasts is a content complete package, with some nice tweaks, but a few technical issues. Content wise, you're getting a full open world to explore, with loads of secrets to discover, and monsters to catch and battle. The game doesn't feel like it's missing any content. You also do get free save slots. Settings wise, there are some nice tweaks. You can choose between graphics and performance mode. We played in performance mode, and still encountered a lot of frame stutter, especially when going between map squares. This was the sole technical issue we encountered, but it was a pretty big one and happened a lot. Glitch effects can be enabled or disabled. There are sliders for master, music, sound effect, and voice volume. You can also enable or disable music vocals. Gameplay settings have a lot of nice quality of life tweaks. Autosave can be enabled, as can a speedrun timer and HUD quest tracker. Status effect tutorials can be always shown, shown when you encounter a new status effect, or never shown. Screen shake and controller vibration can be enabled or disabled. AI smartness and level scaling can be independently tweaked with sliders. This is a fantastic pair of quality of life changes and allows you to just completely customise the difficulty to your liking. There are also major language options. There are no subtitle options, but the subtitles in the game are extremely large, have a background, and don't progress until you hit a button. These are perfect, especially as the voice acting in the game is extremely limited. Overall, I'm pretty impressed. You're getting a great content offering here, and whilst there's not a lot of settings, what's here is very nice. However, those frame rate issues happened a lot for me, and did pull me out of the experience, and thus, we're giving the specs here a 4 out of 5. going to take you in the ballpark of 15 to 20 hours to beat Cassette Beasts. I think this is a solid length, at about an hour a day you'll be done in a couple of weeks. The game also saves it nice and frequently, and you can save at your leisure. It's very easy to hop in, make some progress, and hop back out, regardless of the amount of gaming time you have. Cassette Beasts is very easy to fit into any amount of free time. 
hard drive footprint is also tiny at a 1.4 gigabyte install. My only commitment issue comes back around to that repetitiveness issue I talked about in the gameplay section. This is obviously going to vary from person to person, but for me it did make me feel like my time could have been better spent the more I played. Overall though, Cassette Beast does a solid job of respecting both your time and hard drive, even if those repetitiveness issues do bring it down to a 4 out of 5 on a commitment scale. We are right on the razor's edge here. We consider anything that scores 15 or above on our scale worth your time. This is our version of a 5 out of 10, so in my opinion, Cassette Beasts is worth your time, but just barely. I think it has some excellent ideas, and I am definitely going to keep an eye on the next project this dev team puts out, because there's some promise here, but I think Cassette Beasts is just a bit too muddled and a bit too safe. At the end of the day, this is not a bad game, far from it. For me, it was just average, and it has a unique enough combat system that it gets my trepid recommendation. I just wouldn't go in expecting it to blow the roof off. If we join in arms, we can become more than one and we can pass the torch back and forth, set the world alight as we fight and unite. Ooh, when you're feeling low, you can ooh, take my hand, I'll show you to the ooh.